So now that we understand the basic ideas of heap memory for a process, we can discuss in a bit more detail the ideas of malloc and free. So malloc and free are going to be a common function used for heap memory management. And generally, they have a lot of advantages over sbreak and break. Generally, that they're going to be easier to use for threaded programs. They're standardized for the C library. So sbreak and break actually aren't available in every single Linux distribution. So malloc and free give a more general implementation that's going to work on all systems. Uh, they give a more simple interface for memory to be allocated, especially in smaller units. And they're going to allow for arbitrary deallocation of blocks of memory as well. So to give an example of this, we can discuss something that requires some dynamic memory allocation, which is a struct. And this is something that we discussed a bit as we were discussing things like stacks and queues in C. And it was this idea that if we have a struct, in order to actually declare that struct, we need to be able to allocate some memory for it as dynamic memory on the heap. So the way that that works is we say struct s, and then we give it a name. So new s, I'm just going to call it as an example is equal to malloc. Now we want to allocate a block of memory that is the size of this struct. And that will allow us to use this struct freely in our application. So the way that we do that is we just say size of struct s. And what this will do is it will take the size of this struct. And what we mean by that essentially is the amount of memory required to store this struct, so its properties essentially. And it's going to allocate some memory for that and store it inside of this pointer. So this pointer right now just points to an area of memory that is large enough to hold this struct. And using just that simple idea, we can actually start to modify the values of this struct. So I can start to point to the values to say, you know, the value is equal to 10, for instance. That will change this value property. What's really happening here is we go to this memory location that was allocated for this struct and we place that value into it. And we place it in such a way that it's distinguishable as the value property. So there's a way that that gets stored at the memory level to make it you know, distinguishable as that actual value. But that's generally all that's happening. We're just allocating that memory on the heap and then we're placing that value onto the heap in that memory that we've allocated. Then when we go and print this, of course, we can access the value as well, right? And all that's going to do is it's going to go to the memory that's associated with that particular property and it's going to get its value, right? So we could do new s value and that would get that value for us and it will print it out for us to be able to use. So you can see that it's very easy for us to work with this memory that's been allocated. Now, once we're done with this memory, ideally what we would do is we would free this memory up since we no longer need it. And what happens is when we go to allocate some memory next, what the malloc is going to do is it's going to take a look at the memory that's been freed by the free function first. And it's going to see if there's a block there that's big enough to fit the allocation that we're asking for. If there is, it will use that freed block. Otherwise, it's going to go to the unallocated memory and it's going to allocate some of that for this uh, variable instead. So that's the reason why we want to do free. It allows us to free up some memory to use at a later time if we need to. Now, in this particular example, when this program ends, all the memory is returned back regardless. So we don't actually need to free here because the program ends right after this. So it's not really required. However, if our program was bigger and we were making multiple allocations, it would be maybe a good idea for us to free up those allocations at a later time to be able to use that memory at some point. Now, as we're discussing this idea of allocating and freeing memory, it's important to understand the idea that when we do malloc, since it's looking at freed memory first, it doesn't necessarily change the program break. If that freed memory exists and it's already inside of that heap, it's not going to change the S break because we don't need to take in more unallocated memory to be able to allocate that space. Similarly, when we free up memory, it's not necessarily going to change the program break either because we might be freeing memory somewhere further down in the heap. So we wouldn't necessarily change the whole break to that because there's other you know, variables and memory allocations elsewhere. So these aren't directly changing the program break. They're simply using memory in whatever method is required. If it does need more memory, then of course it will take more memory from that unallocated space and we will see the break actually change to accommodate that. But in some cases, we might not see the break actually change. And we can actually verify that by taking a look at the break after our mallocs and after our freeze to see if there actually are any changes. And that's something that's rather interesting to look at, right? So we could take a look at the idea of the breaks after these. So I could take a look at my current break by doing like an S break of zero, right? So when I do this, this will give us our initial baseline to say, okay, what does the break look like? And remember, 
when we do this, when we do our first printf, the break is going to actually change. So you have to remember that that is the case, right? So we know that this is actually going to change. So in order to get an accurate reading of what the program break is, we're actually going to just do this twice. That way we can see what it is after this printf. And what I really want to demonstrate to you is what the memory looks like at each different aspect. So this is after alloc and it's before print. So that's our first break. Our second break is after print. So we're expecting that to change. And then after this print, nothing's going to change further. But after the free, it would be interesting to say, well, what does it look like after we free the memory? Because we could see generally this idea that it might not change the actual uh, heap itself. So we could say after free, right? Let's take a look at what we get as a result from this. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this. And oh, we can see here, oh, just because I redefined the, the void here. So we could just uh, remove these redefinitions. So let's go ahead and do this as current break. And then this one here, I just have to change to current break as well. There we go. Okay, let's give that another try. It should compile now for us. There we go. And let's run it. Do you see that before, you know, the allocation between this and the free, do you see that the free doesn't actually change the program break? And this was exactly as I was discussing. We're not going to expect that to actually change it. And actually, interestingly enough, we don't see it change at all through this process before the print actually happens. Now, it might be helpful for us to take a look at what it looks like before we actually have the memory allocation. So let me just add that in here because it's probably a useful area to look at. So we could do our, uh, our print here. And this would be our print uh, before the alloc, right? Before alloc, before print. And then we'll just do one more that's after alloc, after print, or after alloc, before print, like this. This will give us a bit of a better picture of what this is going to look like. So when I put this together, you'll see that the memory looks like this. After the alloc, you do see that the program break does change. We allocated more memory. There's no memory that's currently freed. So we were expecting to have to use unallocated memory because we need to get some more memory to be able to create this struct. After the alloc and before the print, we're not really seeing any sort of differences. But after the print, we could take a look and see, it doesn't seem like there's any differences there, but after we free, we also see that there's no differences. So you can see generally where the program break is changing and where it's not changing. It changes when we need to take things from unallocated memory, that's our initial allocation of memory. But after the free, it doesn't change because we aren't actually changing the program break. We're just setting that memory aside to say, this is free now and we can use it for the next allocation. And if we were to allocate after that free, we would see a similar type of idea if it's the same size, right? If I allocate a struct of the same size right after that, it should use that freed memory and we wouldn't expect the program break to change. So this gives you a bit more of a deep dive into how heat memory is structured for a process. Again, it's a helpful thing to understand as you're working with memory in C because it's something that you sort of have to be aware of as you're continuing to allocate and free memory. What actually happens when we allocate memory? What actually happens when we free it? So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.